Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples, for the Lord is great and highly to be praised. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate this Holy Mass, this union between heaven and earth, as peoples of the Catholic faith, that is the universal faith that is spread across all the world, all nations are bound up together in professing the one God. And so we give thanks to God for calling us brothers and sisters of Christ. And we give thanks to God that we can be bound up as brothers and sisters from many nations and many races. And so on this Columbus Day, let us celebrate the Mass of the Evangelization of Peoples, giving thanks that the message of salvation has come to us in varying ways and in varying times to varying places, but it is the one message of salvation offered for all. And so, dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, you have willed that your church be the sacrament of salvation for all nations, so that Christ's saving work may continue to the end of the ages. Stir up, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and grant that they may feel a more urgent call to work for the salvation of every creature, so that from all the peoples on earth, one family and one people of your own may arise and increase. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading of the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, it is written that Abraham has two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. The son of the
While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. In our first reading today, as we hear from St. Paul writing to the Galatians, we are invited to recognize the, the nature of the covenant to which, we have been, uh, to which we have been invited. The covenant. What is a covenant but a relationship, an alliance, a deep and unified bond, not merely contractual by, by the letter of the law or by some sort of legal agreement, but a deep and abiding alliance, that, that, a relationship that unifies in a unique and particular way. And God establishes his covenant, this alliance, this relationship, already with their first parents. Let us make man in our image and likeness. Male and female, he created them. Already from that first beginning of our being, God has established a deep and unified bond. Yes, it is a bond that is, as it were, incomplete. It is a bond that is marked by our human nature and his divine nature but it is a bond that is true. It is a bond and a covenant that we, have, that we have been unfaithful to. We know it in our own selves, and we know it in history. We are, it is difficult for us to be faithful to our relationships. And God be praised for those relationships where we indeed sacrifice our very selves to which we are faithful day in and day out. And God gives us grace to be faithful to our relationships. God gives us grace to be faithful to our covenant. And even when we fall, the Lord is there to restore us, to redeem us. And we can go through the covenants throughout history. And here in our first reading today, St. Paul is highlighting the, 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 the two covenants that were established in Abraham, one by the slave woman and the other by the freeborn woman. These women represent two covenants. The son of the slave woman was born naturally. The son of the freeborn through a promise. And in Abraham, the father of faith, we recognize this generation of our relationships as a peoples. And, and Abraham fell in his relationship with God. There was a covenant that was promised, but there was also a covenant that was established in slavery as he doubted that promise. And we see this already in the very, we can see this in an allegorical sense in the different religions of the world. But that's another homily. <laughs> but as we recognize the, these two covenants, let us recognize that God has established this unifying covenant for us by his promise. Yes, there is a line where it is by natural generation, where it is by history and heritage, where it is by privilege or lack thereof. And we know how to live 
in those relationships, or rather we know how those relationships suffer because they're only stuck in the natural consideration of things. Separation of peoples because of language. Separation of peoples because of race, called racism. Separation of peoples because of personal and an individual preference. And there is that type of relationship that our world is still bound by, indeed enslaved by, our weakness to rise above, our weakness to be faithful and to love. But God establishes this covenant with us in freedom, too. He establishes this covenant where we can choose to be united as God has chosen to be united with us. And how do we see these relationships? How do we see ourselves in this covenant? Are we seeking a sign that somehow it will give us direction for this way or that way? Or do we recognize the sign that is Christ Jesus himself, that God became man, that the divine nature took on a human nature, that Christ Jesus suffered and died for our sins so that we may rise up with him. And so let us be faithful to the covenant of our freedom in God, fundamentally in Christ Jesus, God from God, light from light. Let us be recognizing of the opportunities that present themselves to us in our relationships to be men and women of that covenant, that covenant new and eternal, ratified in the very blood of Christ, and a covenant that is made perfect in love. That is the sacrificial love of Christ, the love of God for his people. Amen. And so, dear brothers and sisters, let us turn towards the Lord with our prayer and petition. May the Holy Spirit continue to lead us to a deeper conversion and faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For civic leaders, may the Lord guide their work of serving the needs of their community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who are oppressed, God deliver them to safety and freedom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our faith community, may the grace of this sacrament bring us closer to Christ and one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for all those who have gone before us in faith, and especially today we remember John Hunty, may they find eternal rest and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the prayers written in our book of remembrance, and those we have been asked to pray for, and those we lift up from the depths of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. May your grace, Lord, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offerings and prayers of your church, O Lord, rise up in the sight of your majesty and gain acceptance, just as the glorious passion of your Son was pleasing to you for the salvation of the whole world. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. You see the communion of the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ. The 
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel, says the Lord. I am with you always. Through the Lord may possess a great part that what has been given to us in time may be him for eternity. Let us pray. May our participation at your table sanctify us, O Lord, we pray, and grant that through the sacrament of your church, all nations may receive in rejoicing the salvation accomplished on the cross by your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just again, an invitation to, to each and every one about our um, opportunity for adoration and, and diocesan in unity at the cathedral this coming Friday. So uh, please do put that on your calendars, uh, whether it's coming to the 12 noon mass in the cathedral and opening with ad adoration from 1 to 3, or coming for praise and worship from 7 to 9, uh, both at uh, the cathedral of St. Michael the Archangel. So please, please uh, share the news and, and, and know that you're invited, and it'll be just so wonderful uh, to see uh, not just our faithful from our parish church, but faithful from all of our parish churches united in prayer, especially as we pray for uh, the new bishop of Springfield. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. all holy.